so Lou is working in the AI Foresight Institute, uh, building uh, towards technology, enable better future and connecting uh, uh, and growing in a decentralized scientific community for those goals. So Lou, the floor is yours. And so a uh, reminder after that, uh, it's uh, we have about 20 minutes for questions. I hope you don't, I hope you don't have questions because I have many questions. But <laughs> my very dear friend Yoshabak would say, I congratulate you on being alive right now on this planet. It's a really interesting time to be alive. We are this amazing weird species that, in the space of just a few generations, has built a world in which we are mostly protected from predation, from being attacked or eaten, and where we can live in health and die with dignity. In addition to that, now we are teaching rocks how to think. And um, the question is not, should we teach those rocks to think or not? It's probably inevitable. Um, and we better be prepared when it happens. Because, because teaching rocks how to think, it's also looking at building the next system, a system that may be able to defeat entropy at scale. A system that, if we are lucky, will maybe integrate us, take us to get to know the universe, deeply, much further than we know it now. Let's see how this can be possible. In this talk, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what is the uh, alignment, what is the challenge there, and where the hope lies. So AI superintelligence, sorry, is as unfathomable to us as the complexities of human civilization uh, would be to our monkey ancestors. Like, monkey ancestors would not understand the computer. Um, it's a misconception when we think about AI to think it's coming linearly after human intelligence. Um, as Otto touched on just earlier, if AI is a rock that can solve a problem and execute a task, an AGI is a advanced form of human intelligence that can do pretty much everything that a human can do. And like some people disagree with this definition, but let's take it as a, for practical purpose for this talk. And shortly after this AGI, superintelligence is theorized to be the moment when an AGI, which since it's capable, like a human maybe, to improve itself, would be then able to improve itself and it is believed to be uh, an exist um, not existential, uh, uh, exponential phenomenon um, in the sense that uh, AI is not a um, carbon substrate, therefore not limited, and um, can this would mean like a development of intelligence far, far, very far beyond um, human intelligence. In that context, we can define alignment as a scenario where humans remain the authors of their own story, at least as much as they are now. And a lot of people, and maybe more, like see, people think about having, um, you know, if we have AI slaves uh, and we control AI, maybe we have even more agency, but not less agency. It's a complex issue because we humans are fundamentally misaligned. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but, um, but the thing is, even in our misalignment, even um, like we have, even when we disagree or we have wars, we have millions of years or millions of years of evolution uh, to understand each other like feeling and like each other context. Um, you don't have to tell a human not to kill another human. A human notes, unless this human is psychopathic. The problem with AI is it has 100% chances of being psychopathic. <laughs> like, there is really no reason that an AI would understand or feel human beings. Um, 
And conversely, the problem is hard because we ourselves actually do not understand <coughs> AIs. Um, they are often defined as a black box, um, meaning we, when we look at an artificial intelligence, we cannot know whether it presents uh, an existential threat. Um, and in this sense, alignment is uh, in the category of incomplete science. Uh, we lack current solutions. It's not the case that we have a, vi a viable plan to achieve it. So it, it is a huge problem. Um, God is calling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little like relief pose in this. It's, uh, com comical relief is important when we talk about existential risk. So alignment is harder than we think. Uh, we could get rid of a few oversimplifications. Um, for instance, uh, I, I would love to play with you the, the bad alignment take bingo, but I, I have a lot of things to, to tell you, so I don't have so much time. Uh, but the point is, this is the bad alignment take bingo. You can't even read anyway, but I can, I can share this slide and then you can like play your, against yourself and see how many of these like, you know, false easy solutions you know. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Just come, come to see me. This is going to be a distraction because it's, it's too much here. Um, <laughs> no. Um, the takes could be something like just unplug it, like switch it off. But the problem is AI is already decentralized, so you you cannot like there is not a central button. Or it could be like put it in a box, you know, put it in a cage. But the problem is we are already connecting the LLMs to the internet. It's already happening. Or you could say, okay, it's not embodied. It's like it's a rock, so it won't hurt us. But the truth is. If it is connected to us, it can hack us, it can bribe us, it can um, yeah, blackmail people, and if it knows how to do that, then it has control over humans. And those are just a few examples, as you can see. There are many. Um, it's a big problem, and it seems to be an urgent one. Um, timelines in the field have gone from 30 to 50 years, meaning like when experts think that AGI is going to be happening. Um, it's been going from 30 to 50 years to like 3 to 5 years. And just to sort of get a feel, like embody this feeling, Paul Cristiano, who is one of the most uh, regarded researchers in the field, was asked on a podcast, I think he was really trying to get away from like putting a date on it, but he was asked in a podcast, um, when do you think uh, an AI uh, will be able to build a Dyson sphere? So, you know, a technology that is able to harness the energy of a star. And he said 2030, so in six years. <laughs> the question is, when an AI is building a Dyson sphere and going to harness uh, the energy of the sun, first of all, that has a lot of deep implication about everything else that's happening and possible at that time, are we there? Like, are we, what about humanity? Like, is the AI, like, you know, alone, like, going to explore space, or are we, are we doing that in collaboration? Um, so, that's the big question for us today. How can humans and super intelligent AI coexist? Um, let's explore some alignment uh, solution. So I wanted to start with OpenAI because it's the main, you know, most advanced like um, AI development lab. Uh, OpenAI strategy, to just summarize it, is an approach of control. We are trying to um, control, align this AI. And how are we doing it with OpenAI? It's actually using AI to control AI. No, it's not a joke. Um, <laughs> I thought it was when I heard it the first time. Um, no, actually, there, there are serious approaches trying to do this, and um, mostly it's, uh, okay, without going too much into the technical detail, sometimes using, uh, using a weaker AI that we think we can control to control a stronger AI, or um, having two AIs like debate each other, and then picking which one is the best. Uh, of course, there are 
a lot of issues and we, we don't know that this approach can work. Like the, there can be a lot of critics here, like who is checking the, the, the checker, for instance. Um, another of these approaches is uh, constitutional AI, so giving, it's like, give, give it some rules, <coughs> basically. Give it some like big principles, like the Declaration of Human Rights, and um, Anthropic is trying to do that with their AI called Claude, uh, constitutional AI. Um, lots of ethical questions there. Uh, who, what principles are we choosing? Again, this is referring to the fact that we humans are not aligned, so it's hard to choose <laughs> what principle, if that's even possible. Um, this is quite a technical approach, but I'll try to summarize it as fast as possible. It's using formal logic and proof systems. Um, the core idea is that it's in general hard to construct proofs, but it's easy to check them with 100% accuracy. Uh, and because of that asymmetry, you can imagine weaker systems doing the checking, but stronger systems doing the proving. Uh, and so the idea is maybe we could protect ourselves with this layer of mathematics. Um, Forsyth Institute um, is exploring multiple security neurotech approaches. Um, these approaches are often considered as the neglected ones in the field, but what I think is interesting about them is they involve an idea of uh, coexistence with, between humans and AI that is a bit more subtle than this sort of like, okay, give it some rule control. Um, let's see a few of them. So there is the multiple um, AI world, which is a possible scenario uh, where that involve a balance of power among numer numerous super intelligent entities uh, and humans, so echoing the checks and balances of maybe democratic governance. Um, there is also the cryptographic and security approaches that is quite tied to this multipolar scenario. Um, these approaches are, like the idea here is to look at the, the, what, what we have learned in economics, uh, in game theory, in cyber security, and apply this knowledge to a world with AI. Um, and there can be actually a lot to learn from the field of cryptography, uh, because the field of cryptography has had to build very robust uh, systems that are actually secure. And the ones that, that, are not <laughs> that are not secure have been sort of eliminated by, uh, yeah, eliminated, um, or are. I'm quite fond of uh, neurotech approaches myself. Um, I imagine that here in this crowd some people may be interested as well. Um, so some people consider that uh, whether neurotechnology, in particular whole brain emulation, um, could be an idea for alignment. Uh, some, some idea could be if, um, if we generate software intelligence that is human aligned, um, that is, we could generate software intelligence that is human aligned by modeling it uh, or by being based, by basing it directly on human brains. Uh, maybe it would be uh, it would be easier this way. Foresight has a workshop this year on this topic. Uh, some interesting idea in there, maybe a concept that is perhaps helpful, is the idea of a differential technology development. So it means that if we are strategic about the order in which we develop certain technologies, we may have better chances. Like there are, like let's say, we really speed up uh, neurotech. Maybe that will help uh, with uh, artificial intelligence alignment. Um, other neurotech approach: human intelligence augmentation. So that's interesting. The idea here is ourselves, like our, you know, carbon, good old carbon-based brain, uh, make them smarter and. Um, this could happen in future generations with uh, technologies like CRISPR, or actually we may be able to gain up to 30 IQ points uh, by, by using genetic engineering in adults. And of course here, 
the sort of dilemma uh, and obstacles can be like legal, cultural, and also, you know, there are deep ethical challenges here. Um, but, you know, we need to find solutions. Um, one idea that I found super interesting in the space, um, again, pretty niche, is the idea of uh, BCI accelerationism, so brain-computer interface accelerationism, that has been proposed by Trent McConaughey. Um, I can, yeah, I think I reference. I can also share the article after, but his idea is to me, basically, okay, the core principle is shape the, the, super in, the AI from the beginning, instead of like training a model that we then don't know how it works and try to align, it's like everyone by uh, having a sort of like AI connected to their BCI can, can personally train an AI. And um, what's interesting about this approach is that is proposing a strategy that is really taking into account market forces, is being like, okay, first we're gonna develop killer applications that everyone is going to want and that's really going to push forward um, uh, brain computer interface and like neurotech in general and what i find interesting there is like whether or not we like it um, there is extreme competitive pressure that is pushing ai forward and thinking of like you know taking this into account in the fact that you know in a sense it feels so overwhelming and like relentless uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the push forward from, from market forces that maybe it's good to have strategies that uh, think about how to use that. Um, okay, last part of this talk. The case for philosophy. So um, there is a bunch of people who are arguing for thinking about this uh, deeply, and I think that's a really good idea. There is a new initiative called the Cosmos Institute that is pretty cool. And um, there is, as Beatrice uh, brilliantly uh, like showed, sh demonstrated us, uh, to us yesterday, Existential Hope, um, that is an initiative um, carried by Foresight. And here the idea is, okay, we have this existential risk, um, but first let's look at where we want to go. And I don't know if you, that's where we started, right? It's like this world that everything we could do with the AI and how wonderful it could really be. And like once we know where we want to go uh, and we feel like motivated, you know, and we desire to get there, then look at what are the challenges uh, that are in the way. Um, Yeah, and acknowledge the potential for positive futures and for positive outcomes. Um, a last point on philosophy. I'm going to end up also with um, Yosha Bach, since I started my talk with him. Um, but it is possible, here we talked about alignment, but people would disagree also with this definition of alignment, whether it's, you know, possible or that it even makes sense to think about alignment in this way. So it's possible that the question we need to explore is not how we can control AI, but how humans and super intelligent AI can coexist in even deeper ways. It's possible that the way we are thinking about this currently is not right. Um, that's it's possible that all the approaches I've shared before are wrong <laughs> um, because there are these approaches based on, on control again. Uh, and maybe we radically need to reinvent our frameworks, our ethics, our philosophy uh, in order to solve this problem or to even like understand it. Um, so Yosha Bach gave this amazing talk here. I really encourage you to watch it. It like, gives you wonderful insight on like what consciousness is and uh, this problem and it, it says that um, in order to do this deeper uh, coexistence um, we need to understand a few core principles and one of them the maybe the most important is asking the question of how can we create an AI that actually wants to coexist with us um, even if at some point it becomes more intelligent more ag agential and more powerful than us. Maybe it is that we need to allow this AI to discover 
shared purpose, beyond its individual agency. Maybe we need to let it discover its own capacity to act and make choices based not just on its agency, the AIs, but on a profound understanding of others, agency and value. And that teaching could be called love. So maybe <laughs> humans, uh, maybe the, the solution for the alignment problem for humans to be able to play the longest game possible where we still maintain agency and get to know the cosmos is by teaching AI how to love. That's the radical proposition. <laughs> and uh, after all, if we end up merging or going in that direction, that's probably important and necessary. Um, a beautiful future is not impossible. Nothing is written. And today, it's still on us to write it. Thank you.